thank you for coming to worship this morning on this wonderful, wonderful day of the Lord. Praise God. Uh, my dad was a Holy Ghost filled man of God, and I praise God for him. Uh, I would like to, uh, along with the great heroes of the, uh, have gone out to foreign fields and fought battles. We want, we honored them this morning. We want to honor those that, uh, in my hometown, that, um, that we used to honor all the saints of old, and, and mention some people that served the Lord and had carried the battle uh, of Jesus Christ for many years. And, and I would like to mention a few of my older uh, relatives as well as uh, I thought godly gospel of preaching men. Uh, one of them is uh, Taylor Plunkett and uh, another was G.W. Bolden and Mrs. Bolden was my second grade teacher. He, he was the principal of the school but he's also my pastor. And Those people have served God and ca carried the gospel in the past. Praise God for Brother Ray Hughes and for other men that have pra pastored as well as been overseers and done great things for God. We need to honor them. Would you uh, ask God's blessings on their families this morning with me as we prepare our hearts today? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the soldiers of the cross. We thank you for every soldier that has uh, served under the American flag and those that have served under the Christian flag law. So we honor them today. We ask your blessings upon their families. Lord, uh, many of them, we know not where they are, but, oh, God, you know. We ask your blessings on them. Bless, God, bless America. God, send revival to America and give us deliverance in these last days. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we praise you and we give honor to, it says, give honor to whom honors do. We honor each of those soldiers. We thank you, O oh Lord, for my brother that served, O oh God, in, in the Middle East. We ask your blessings upon his family. We ask blessings upon friends far and near that have served in the military. Bless them, O oh God, and strengthen their lives. Give grace and strength to your people today and help us to honor you and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you today. Praise God. Uh, guess who's coming to at dinner? It's last week's message. Praise the Lord. And it was about a, a little fella called Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. And he climbed up in a tree to see Jesus. Now, we knew that. Pastor Ray did a wonderful job at displaying about this little man. And certainly, Jesus surprised him and said, I'm going to home with you today and have lunch with you. Uh, very few, few uh, he is the only one that I think in the whole scripture, and I don't remember anybody else, that uh, Jesus said, I'm going home with you. But he must have known Zacchaeus' heart. I'm sure he did. Uh, he knew that he was very interested and wanted to find the Savior that day. That's why he climbed up in that tree. And uh, praise God for all the good things that Pastor Ray said about him. We all need to surrender. He gave half of his substance to the poor that day. And he said, if I've cheated anybody, that uh, I'll repay him fourfold. That's a big statement, isn't it, for a rich, rich man to do that. Uh, Jesus said it was very hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God because they hold on to their earthly treasures. <coughs> but Zacchaeus gave up that day and followed Jesus. Praise God. Let's follow Jesus today. Amen. I have a, uh, a, a message that I believe the Lord laid on my heart. I, I hope you will receive it today because uh, it goes along with the scripture Pastor Ray used for uh, uh, the uh, offering. Give, give it, uh, it says, asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find. God knows your heart today. And on Pentecost Sunday, if you don't have the Holy Spirit abiding in your life fully, when you wake up in the morning or when you go to bed at night uh, and the Lord don't wake you up you're speaking in tongues uh, every once in a while let me encourage you to seek the Holy Spirit and the infilling with such strength and ask him to bless you that way amen <coughs> believe and receive I'd like to say and it says as uh, and all things this is Matthew 21 22 <coughs> and all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer Believing, you shall receive. Praise God. 
keep that in mind while we go to the book of Acts. I want to preach on the day of Pentecost today. And believing that God will use his word to quicken your heart and bring you closer to him today. From the book of Acts, the first chapter in the eighth verse. Jesus is fixing to go away in this chapter here. But he told the disciples to tarry and wait in Jerusalem. But he said, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come up on you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And right after that, he was taken up. It, it says so right here in the word of God. But I will go on over where it is fulfilled in chapter 2. If your Bible's open, it's probably just on the next page. Uh, on the first verse of the second chapter, it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Praise God. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they were, there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat on each one of them. And, there were, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise God. This was a uh, outpouring of the Spirit. Praise God. I will talk a little bit about Pentecost uh, Sunday before that in just a moment. Would you pray with me? Father, we have read the word. Lord Jesus, touch the hearts of men and women and, and boys and girls that may be here in the house today. Help us to receive from the divine uh, grace of God. Lord, those things you'd have us to receive today. Fill our hearts with love and passion as we've sung today. And your spirit has come down and moved on this congregation. We pray blessings and health and strength. And we may have the word of God strengthened us today. We ask your blessings now in Jesus' name. The word, amen and amen. You may be seated. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, Pentecost. It's the seventh feast uh, of the Jewish uh, uh, group. They, they would come together on this particular day and they uh, would uh, build little uh, uh, lean-tos. Uh, they, they were booths, they call them. And they had uh, used four different types of branches, palm branches, and uh, also, uh, I believe the myrtle tree was one of them. But anyway, they built a arbor, what we would call today. It was a, a little tent. Uh, they would build it big enough for their family, what it was. It was either on the top of their house or out in the courtyard, but it wasn't inside a house. It was always outside. Now, uh, getting somebody ready to do something, you get them out of their house. You're getting somebody ready to do something, aren't you? Yeah, that's what the Lord did. He got them out in booths and little places uh, to be taken care of. The Lord Jesus Christ wants us to be ready to have something new happen for us. And that's what he did. Uh, for years and years they had been coming. And what they would do on this particular occasion, they would uh, stay in these booths and they had a good time. They sang and uh, praised God and they uh, did many good things and they ate together. But in the evening, as the, uh, maybe as the sun was going down or just after it went down, they had a special offering that they would pour out uh, to the Lord. And, uh, I tried to find out where they poured it, but I, uh, the water was brought from a special well outside the gate, and they would pour it out. And then on down the line, the, in the evening on those seven days, then down the line, they would add wine being poured out too. What a, a beautiful example of joy. Fresh water and fresh drink, the wine would be being poured out. And this was the wine of the Spirit illustrated to the people that was being poured out on the day of Pentecost. But it had been a, a custom for a long, long time. And you know, I believe that there was many of those people, especially the, the apostles, the 120 in the upper room. I believe got, they got that message real clear on that day. Here is the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, the divine power of God being poured into my heart and life because I have accepted what he said. And the way they accepted, they believed Jesus. They believed him. Uh, he said, go and tarry. And, uh, you know, God 
makes us wait on some things for a while. A, I believe it was 11 days, 10 or 11 days that they waited since Jesus went away until the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them. God gave them a lot of blessings. Amen? Uh, praise and joy was the day's occasion. It's praise and joy when uh, Jesus reveals to us that he's coming again. And one of the greatest things that the Holy Spirit, I believe, does, he whispers to us, that he's coming back. He's coming again. He's going to uh, show up one of these days, unexpected by the rest of the world, but he is coming again. And uh, if, if you're looking at the Old Testament and the prophecies that are coming true, uh, we may not be uh, too close to Israel uh, when the Lord Jesus comes back, but he's coming there. He's going to come back. And the exciting thing to me is that we have a home that is coming down out of the heavens that we'll be able to go to, praise God. The new Jerusalem is coming down, and uh, they spotted it a, a long time ago with that big telescope they have. I haven't heard anybody say too much about it lately, but there's an object coming down from out of heaven. It's four square, and that's exactly what Revelation describes it. It's a city four square. And it is not little, my friend. It, it's uh, uh, dimensions in our American terminology, or our uh, uh, English uh, uh, vernacular. It is 1,500 miles on each side. That's a square. But the thing of it is, it makes it a cube. It goes 1,500 miles straight up. Praise God. Now, we've seen big buildings, and they uh, have a lot of people. Well, someone, uh, the scientists and uh, uh, people got together and figured out that if, uh, I forgot how many square feet it was, but it was a, uh, like a, a castle inside that would be divided with all the people that's ever been born and what they projected would be born, there'd still be some room in that. The castle's coming. Are you ready? Let me encourage you. If you have not received, believe. Amen? Believe and receive. Because... Uh, a lot of folks have uh, sought the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I, I have had people in my congregation, not, not only here, but other places. I don't know anyone that is seeking the Holy Spirit right now that hasn't received. But uh, a lot of folks will give up and won't receive tongues in the interpretation of tongues. They, they just give up because they, they think it's maybe not for them. There's a lot of interpretations in churches around the United States and around the world about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, some teach that the uh, Holy Spirit was only for the apostles' day and so on. Some said it ended in uh, 300, that there was no more power and no more healing and no more things of the Holy Ghost coming down. But it is. He's still here. Praise God. Uh, in uh, 1896 was a marked incident in a, a little place out of Murphy, North Carolina, a place called uh, Shearer's Schoolhouse. They was having a revival. Molly Plemons and 12 others were worshiping there, and they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking with other tongues. And it was a, a recorded. It went around uh, the United States that this had happened. And nobody, a lot of people didn't believe it, and I, the community didn't like it because they was declaring this. And they tore their church building down uh, and uh, pulled the logs down. Uh, there was a, a log building that built worshiping in they pulled the building down piled up the logs and burned it well that didn't stop them they kept on praising and glorifying god and worshiping the lord people being healed people being saved the, the feast of pentecost was happening in the united states in a rural community uh, near murphy north carolina uh, the holy spirit is here today it's a day of celebration we should praise him for what he has done in the past what he's done for the church and if you have ever been touched of the Lord, the Holy Ghost touches you. Because this is his reign. Uh, God the Father reigned uh, in the Old Testament. Jesus came. And he is going to reign in the thousand year reign. But this is the reign of the Holy Spirit. If you will listen to him and let the Holy Spirit bless you today. D day of celebration, day of praise. Uh, I, I want to say a, a little personal testimony here. Uh, when I first got saved... Praise God. One of the most wonderful things that ever happened to me, I think it is the most uh, exciting thing that ever happened to me in my life. I've been praying a long time to be saved, and I didn't know how to get saved. But uh, I uh, had read the Bible. 
I'd been to ch church. I went to Sunday school from the time I was in the first grade. And actually, I went to ch church and Sunday school when I was uh, uh, much younger than that. Uh, actually, uh, going to a church almost all my life. But uh, I wanted to be saved. I, I knew what they talked about when they would talk about the uh, gospel and the preacher would preach. And I never would walk out and make a commitment. But when I was 17 years old, I decided before I went to church, I said, Lord, I'm plenty. I don't know what the preacher's going to be preaching about tonight. But as soon as he's finished, I'm coming. I'm coming to the altar. I'm going to give my heart to you. And I went down to the altar and I prayed. My uh, sister Carolyn went too. And I think Wanda uh, went to the altar that same night. And they were praying. I prayed and I didn't get any satisfaction down there. I uh, said, now, Lord, I got up and went outside. And I was standing on the porch the Plant City Church, Church of God in Plant City. And I said, Lord, I've done everything I know to do. I'm just going to read your word like I've always been doing. And if, uh, I'm going to follow whatever I understand in the word. And I'm going to follow you. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, that's all I need, son. He spoke my heart. I knew I was saved right then and there. The Holy Spirit touched me. And that night uh, when I went to bed, uh, I felt the whole... Uh, how the lights are here tonight, that's the way that my whole ceiling felt to me when I'd close my eyes. <coughs> you say, well, you're crazy. Well, i tell you what, you, uh, you let me be alone with Jesus like that. It's all right with me. I'm not worried about what you think or what you feel. And when I go to church, I, I didn't feel like there's a roof. I, I could just reach up and touch the Lord uh, because the Lord was there. Well, I was having a difficult time. The next week, I went to school and there was temptations on every side. I just couldn't hardly... Stand what was going on. Uh, one of my good friends, he had a black Plymouth, a 54 black Plymouth. He said, come on, Ernest, I'll get, let's go out to my car. I, I've got a case of vodka out there. We'll have a drink or two. I said, thank you. No, I don't want that. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, some others tempted me with other things during the week. And I said, Lord, I need something from you. I need power to overcome this. I don't know what I need, Lord, but I'm going to church Sunday. I want to find out what I need. Uh, please, Lord, help me. And I, I prayed that week, not knowing what to uh, ask for. I didn't know to ask for the Holy Spirit. I'd seen people speak in tongues, and I'd saw things, but I didn't know that's what I needed, the power of the Holy Spirit. But I went to church that Sunday morning, and uh, I, I do not know what the minister, the pastor, Brother Burl Summers, preached on that Sunday morning, but I came to the altar, and I said, Lord, you know what I need. I need your power to, in me, my life that I can live for you. I want to have a victorious life. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit fell on me, began to speak in other tongues. I don't know how long I spoke in tongues, but when I finally came to where I was realizing what was around me, nobody was there besides my uh, two little sisters and my mother. Everybody had gone home, it's, I think, one or two o'clock in the afternoon. I was still praising God. They just left me there and went on to have lunch. But uh, uh, that's all right. Uh, uh, God touched me, and I was praising and glorifying God. Now, it may not happen to you like that, but the Holy Ghost is for you. He is for everyone. Because I want to read you another portion of Scripture in this book of Acts and the 39th verse. Uh, uh, yes, he has it on the screen. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That tells, uh, see, there's a lot of folks that, eliminate their blessing because they say, well, it's for somebody down the street. It's for somebody over there. It's for those Pentecostal people that claim Pentecost. Well, let me tell you, it's for everyone that the Holy Spirit is bidding to come and to be a part. And I, I believe there's going to be a church that rises up in the end time that you're going to be able to see people preaching the word like you've never seen before. There'll be young people, uh, it, and it, it, it's so important to read what it says in the book of Acts. Uh, when the minister stood up, he quoted Joel. He said, your sons and your daughters, uh, young maidens will uh, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Never before had the church been open, uh, the uh, temple been opened up to women to do these things. It was uh, ordained of the Lord right here. God said, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Now, there's a prophet, uh, prophetess or two in the Old Testament, but not very many. But this means that the opening up of the Holy Spirit to use ladies and uh, women <coughs> In ministry, God is able to use you today. I just gave a 
personal testimony. You've got a testimony, many of you, how you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I encourage you to meet with God. He understands everything about you. Whatever's hindering you from receiving the baptism, put it out of sight. It's a hindrance. Just get rid of it. God's able to deliver you today. I believe that the power of the Holy Spirit is there for you today. If you'll just trust him and believe. Uh, believe, it says in the word of God, on Jesus as Messiah. That's the first thing. Got to be saved first. You got to receive the Holy Spirit after you have been cleansed. A clean heart. Now, a lot of people think they can just do all kinds of stuff, come to church and say, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> Uh, I saw a little excerpt of a movie last night, and uh, they were uh, returning thanks, and they were confessing their sins of what they've been doing. Uh, you, you can't do that, my friend. Just c keep coming back and saying, forgive me for, uh, if you're lying, cheating, sorry, sorry something, uh, God knows where you're at. You're not trying to live for God. You're just making a, a fool out of yourself and uh, the church when you act like that. Uh, act like you are something you're not. You need to get out on your knees and repent and come clean inside. Then the Holy Ghost will fill you up. Uh, um, I've, I've seen, uh, I had some friends of mine uh, that after I got saved, we was going someplace and one of them cut out uh, cursing like a blue streak. And he said, oh, forgive me. Well, he, he knew I didn't believe in that. Uh, thank God, uh, God cleaned up my mouth when I got saved. I, I cuss a blue streak like the others. I don't, I don't even confess that before my children. I don't want them to know some of the mean things I did. I, I, I just assumed you didn't know that. Uh, and uh, the other things that I, I, I did, I don't want to say it because I want God to be glorified. I want my mortal body to be the temple of the Holy Spirit and that I can live in him. And I receive because I believe. Not that I'm good. Not that anybody else is good. But it is because you believe and you can receive. If you believe, the Holy Spirit will help you to overcome. The promise is yours in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 39. As many as the Lord our God shall call. It's there. It's for you. Uh, 1 Peter 1, uh, 8 through 9. Ye believing... Rejoice with joy unspeakable. This is a testimony of Peter. That's what he felt about being a born-again Christian and filled with the Holy Spirit. He wrote that after being filled with the Holy Spirit. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's nothing like Jesus. There's nothing to compare to him. Uh, I don't care how rich uh, somebody is, uh, uh, the fellow that... Uh, 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 bought this big uh, enterprise. What was it? Uh, what is one that's got the little bird? What, what is that, Ray? What? Twitter. Yeah. I never can remember. Uh, I, I want to call it Tweeter, and I know it's not that right word. My wife's kid. Every time I say it, she corrects me. But uh, uh, he may have some money, but he don't have the joy of the Holy Spirit in his life as far as I know. Uh, I'm not criticizing him, but I just use him as a rich man. And they can, the richest men in the world cannot have the joy unless they ask for it. Just like this, this fellow that Pastor Ray preached about last week, uh, Zacchaeus came down and he received the Lord. Any person can, whether they're rich or poor, uh, wise, or just dumb country bunkers that people will receive Jesus. That's the wisest thing you've ever done. The next thing is to receive the Holy Spirit. He'll lead you into all truth. The Bible says so. He will lead you into all truth if you'll depend upon him. And it's joy unspeakable, Peter said, Acts 1.8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost. I want to stop right there before I read the rest of that. You shall receive power. A lot of people don't realize how powerful the Holy Spirit is. He can change the world instantly just like that. You say... Well, God don't do that. You don't know what he does unless you're in tune with him. I've seen some things that I thought was totally impossible. We pray, we'd have a night's prayer over it. The next day it was gone. Praise God. I don't know what he did, but he took care of the situation. And God is able to do it. He said, you shall receive power. I want you to realize that there's a lot of power that's here. I, I've been thinking and reading about the Holy Spirit uh, most of my ministry, special excerpts. I've got 
four or five new books about the Holy Spirit uh, 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 that I've just been reading. The Holy Spirit is the power on this earth. And I, I marvel at what uh, God did. Uh, I was researching in uh, uh, 1896, the Holy Spirit fell in North Carolina at that little uh, sheer schoolhouse, H Holy Spirit power. In uh, 1888, two years later, the man named Dunlop invented the pneumatic tire. Pneumatos, pneumatos to is the Holy Spirit in Greek. Pneumatic tires became into existence. Uh, now, somebody uh, already had the idea about that and had filed a um, uh, uh, copyright on it before, but he was the one that really put it in effect. Uh, somebody had already done it in, in 1846 or 7, uh, had filed a uh, copyright on a pneumatic tire. And you would not be as comfortable in your seat today if you didn't have new pneumatic tires on your car. Uh, has anybody in here ever rode in a steel-tired wagon? Okay, we, uh, just a bet. Anybody else uh, ride, r ever rode in a steel-tired wagon? Uh, 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 hardly nobody else has been here. Let me tell you, it is not fun to ride in a steel-tired wagon. I, I rode to church in one when I was a little boy. And, and you say, well, I thought you were uh, older than that. Well, uh, in the Second World War, we couldn't go to uh, uh, church with automobiles. You had to drive your mules or horses because you couldn't get any gasoline. So I rode to church. But you know what, my dad? He had pneumatic tires on our way. But I have ridden home with other folks that had steel tires on that wagon, and it, it, you, you're bouncing up and down, your heads are jiggling, and every time you hit a bump in the road, you, you know, your back uh, jerks, and you're, it's, you, if you never rode in a steel tire, now you see those old westerns where those wagons are going over those holes, let me tell you, it's not fun to ride in one of those things. It, it's a difficult thing, and that's even pr princes and kings rode on steel-tired wagons. The, uh, the chariots in Egypt had steel tires on them, I understand. Uh, encourage you today that you're being comforted by a pneumatic tire. <laughs> Every day you ride down the road, pneumatic, the Holy Spirit. The word comes from the Holy Spirit. Word, it comes from Greek. You can look it up in your dictionary if you'd like. Uh, it's pneumatic, and it is the comfort that God has given you. There's many other comforts. The, uh, the power, uh, and the, uh, only, I think it was, I meant to look that up for sure and get the date on it, when steam engines started being used. The, the fire and the water came together, and it makes steam, you know? And the trains that run down the road were the first trains that had great power, and they also put them in big ships, Steam engines that would run, water being heated by fire. They started using fire and water. God releases slowly to mankind the blessings that he, and here was the fire on the people that were in the, uh, on the day of Pentecost, and the water was being demonstrated every night, being poured out and with the wine. Here's illustration. This is life life-giving source into this world. God has gifts for you. He's got power. That's what I wanted to say. He has created power. And think of the atomic power and all the things that we have today uh, that is much more powerful than those early days, even the 1800s. Most of us can't remember back when there was not pneumatic tires. One or two people here ever rode in a steel-tired wagon. And but we are able to have comfort because the Holy Spirit has come. And if, uh, when I was in Prepares Ways Ministry, uh, there was some researchers that came and had a, minister, uh, a, a service with us and said they had researched uh, for the last hundred years where uh, people were prosperous. And it was only where the gospel was preached. Now, I didn't do the research, I just listened to what they said. They said where the gospel is preached freely, 
people, are, their crops do good. They have a lot more uh, ability to uh, do their jobs and so on where the Holy Spirit is there with them. Uh, one of them was Columbia, South, uh, South America. And uh, they have, they're raising sweet potatoes you wouldn't hardly believe. But they, it's because the gospel has been preached there is what they said. But I want you to know that power from on high is in Jesus Christ. And the power of the Holy Spirit, where he moves, he can do marvelous things. And he can deliver us today. It says, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The gospel has gone around the world. And when it completely, a lot of people believe when everybody has heard the word that Jesus is going to come. I can't guarantee that, but I do know he said it would be preached around the world. And I'm expecting him that it's possible it could be preached around the world today. You could put it on YouTube and many other things, and it could go around the world. Uh, say, how do you know? Well, one of the things, back about, I think it was six years ago, that, that a group of uh, Christian people decided that they wanted to evangelize a, a section of the country, the, the 1040 window, I believe it's called. And so they uh, got together and purchased, I forget how, how many million portable phones. And they recorded all the different uh, nationality languages and they put a transmitter in it where they, the person all had to do is mash the button and it would, ha it would be speaking in their language the gospel. And they airlifted those millions of them and dropped them in the 1040 window. Now you didn't hear about it because the, the news media didn't pick it up, but they dropped those hundreds of thousands, of, I think it was uh, six million phones they dropped. Battery operated and uh, uh, they uh, sent messengers throughout the villages to tell them uh, how to operate. It was, there's instructions on there in many different languages so they could pick up the phone and hear the gospel. Uh, 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 praise God. And they could even transmit messages out from that phone. But God knows our needs today. This is a modern day that we live in. The power of flight and all so many things that we have that God has allowed us to have. But one of the greatest things the Holy Ghost does for man is he helps him to overcome sin. It is the power of God unto salvation. If we would listen to the voice of God and depend on the Holy Spirit to fight the power of darkness, overcome, I believe that God would help us to do all to the glory of God. Let me just say, let me read my notes for just a moment. Each individual has power to put down sin in their lives, to submit to, uh, subdue the flesh by the power of obeying Scripture instead of our flesh being in control. Control of the spirit and of the tongue. God can help you control your tongue. A lot of people say, I just can't help it. I just have to speak out. Huh, I'm afraid, read the word. God can help you to control yourself. It's called self-control. You can overcome the urges of the flesh. <laughs> to bless, you can bless and not curse people. You can overcome and be a blessing. He is the comfort that comes down from on high. One of the greatest things I, I enjoyed when I first got saved and baptized with the Holy Ghost, uh, that day after I'd received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I loved everybody, that, no matter who they were. I just had a love that was issued out of me because uh, God was loving me and I was loving everybody. Uh, no matter how, uh, before I had uh, despair about people. Some people, uh, I thought people that were drunkards and so bootleg whiskey, they're some of the meanest people in the world. They might be, but the thing of it is, we got to love them, <laughs> overcome. Uh, I, I remember as a young fellow, probably because my, my dad, Became a born-again Christian, but I'll tell the story about he, how he became a Christian. Uh, he and uh, one of my uncles, they uh, had gone somewhere 
and gotten drunk during the night season, and they were driving home on an old rough road, and they hit a terrible uh, uh, bump in the road, and the windshield was broken, and a part of it came out and hit my dad in the hand, and, and about cut his, uh, uh, the artery off in his hand, and he was bleeding, and uh, they uh, stopped and finally got it uh, closed off, and he told my mom, he said, I told the Lord, if you'll get me home and not let me die, I'll uh, stop drinking and I'll ne I want to serve you, Lord. So that was a, a time that he quit drinking. And uh, from then on, he would never let somebody, that if it, they were drinking, he wouldn't let them come in the house. said, you find you someplace else to stay tonight, whether it's a cousin or anybody. Just going down the road, if you're drinking alcohol, we don't want you in our house. And he wouldn't let anybody drinking or even had uh, alcohol with them. He wouldn't let them come in the house. Now, uh, we ought to respect those things. I looked yesterday when I was going through the grocery store. There was a whole line of wine on one, you know, one whole line. You know, it don't seem like we can do anything about it, but those things are bad. And there's other kind of drugs that are on the streets bad, along with tobacco and many other things that will destroy people's lives. But they just suck it in because their flesh wants it. Once you get addicted to it, you want it, and you want it to keep on doing it. Uh, Pastor, I want you to know that God will rescue you, praise God. I had a young man that was attending church here years and years ago, and it's his testimony. He uh, helped in Sunday school and did other things. He was uh, in, in his early 20s. He, he got out into drugs and stayed out about 10 or 15 years. I don't remember exactly how long it was, but he came up one day when I was in the office, and he came and said, Pastor Roberts, he said, the Lord has healed me and delivered me. He said, I was on, all kind of, I don't know what kind of drugs he was on, but he said he's delivered me. And he came back to the Lord, and I believe he served the Lord the rest of his life. He's, he's gone now, but uh, he served the Lord the rest of his life because the power of God helped him to overcome. God can help you with everything that's going on in your life if you believe it. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Power to believe is a gift. Realize that? The power to believe God is a gift from God. Believe him. Uh, also power to overcome fear. So many people are afraid of what people will think and what's going on in life. Don't be afraid. Trust God. Stand out for Jesus. Power to fight your battles. He'll fight your battles if you'll just depend on him. Power to remove hindrances. Praise God. Sister Ann and I have prayed many a hindrance away. and We're believing God to help us every day. There's a lot of things that hinder you. you. You know, you've gone out sometimes in the garage and the, you have a flat tire. And that's a hindrance. Uh, and we've gone out and the battery wouldn't start. That, those are hindrances. But God has done so many marvelous things for us. Thank God for what he does for us because we believe and we receive. Acts 2, 239, let me read it again. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Here's your medication. Praise God. Here's the greatest medicine you're going to receive any time. It's right here in this book. It'll deliver you. It'll set you free. It'll heal your soul, heal your mind and your body. But you've got to get in it and receive it. Receive the engrafted word into your heart. David said, I have hid your word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Hide your word. Lord, help us to hide it in our heart. Every day, hide it in, in your heart. Thrive on it. Receive the Holy Ghost, and he will lead you and guide you into all truth. Amen? I read the story again uh, yesterday uh, about, I believe it, uh, about to lose his name. Uh, Sister Ann, I told you the story about the man that went into Jerusalem, Edmund. Uh, 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 his name is uh, Allenby. Edmund Allenby was the general that was coming out of Egypt and he had been commissioned to take over Jerusalem. And uh, he wanted to do it without having a lot of slaughter. But he was commissioned by the, uh, the uh, army of Great Britain 
to go take uh, Jerusalem. And he prayed and said, God, I want to have some understanding. He said he read his Bible every day. That's the part I was going to tell you. He, he read his Bible every day. And the Holy Spirit directed him to a portion in Isaiah about birds flying over Jerusalem and that he would take care of them. And he perceived that. God said, uh, reminded him, here the Turks had owned this uh, uh, country from the 12th century. This was in 1917. And the Turks had been in power over Jerusalem since the 12th century. And Allenby had been commissioned to take it over. Uh, he had uh, modern planes and uh, other things, tanks that he could go in there with. And he said, Lord, show me what to do. And you, if you've never heard the story, he said that they've never seen airplanes. Maybe some of them have, but most of them have never even seen an airplane. So they, he got all the planes that he could find in the Middle East, got them together, and he loaded them down with leaflets and had an interpreter, uh, uh, an Arab uh, interpreter to write uh, surrender. This is Allenby. I don't know if I quoted it exactly right, but the interpreter didn't write it that way. He said, Allah obey. And they thought it said Allah. And he dropped those leaflets in Jerusalem. They threw their guns down. They thought that God had sent uh, the message. It was from Allah. They dropped their guns and left uh, and surrendered uh, to the incoming forces. And Mr. Allenby, he, he didn't ride in on a white horse like some other people had. He got off his horse and walked in. He, and they never fired a shot, but they took it. It's an impossible thing. He walked through the gate and walked in and captured Jerusalem, the holy city, and uh, brought it under British control right then. God is able to make things like that happen today if we'll search the scripture, listen to the voice of God, and expect good things. This is our medication. Let's receive it. But he sent the Holy Spirit to guide us through it. Be guided by the Holy Spirit every day of your life. And uh, God can deliver you from anything if you'll trust him. Would you bow your heads with me? Holy Spirit, we thank you. You're the mighty God. There's nothing too hard for you. Things have happened. Powers have been brought to the church, the Christian church. Lord, you have sent so many things. And even today, television, internet, all the things that uh, we can display display and take the gospel but it is the holy spirit that opens the door for us help us to open the door lord that we would be obedient and be witnesses in these last days this is your time lord jesus and the holy spirit reign is now oh lord it, it, the holy spirit reign is soon to be over oh lord let the holy spirit guide us today fill us brim full with your spirit in jesus name Amen and amen. Would you stand with me? Praise God. He is Lord. But we have time to pray this morning. Would you believe God? If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can come and pray. We'll pray with you. I would encourage you to tarry till he comes into your life. He may not be here. He may be at your bedside or someplace else. But God's able to baptize you. And bring speaking with other tongues into your life. That you know, uh, if 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 I had this uh, bottle empty, you'd know if you had a tub of water right here, and I set it down in it. You know how you'd know it's full <laughs> when it sunk down and it was filled up all the way to the top. You'd know it it was filled. That's how you know when you're brim full of the Holy Spirit. You stop using your tongue, the Holy Spirit takes over, and you uh, bubble under the power of the Holy Spirit. You become his servant. Heavenly Father, touch this congregation. If there's any here, loose them from the fears of being baptized. Loose them from the uh, uh, demonstration of the evil one that tells them there's no power like this, but it's real. He is the, the guider. And director, the Holy Spirit is drawing people right now, I believe, to be closer to him 
In Jesus' name, amen. There's one that hasn't received. Some of us will stay here and pray with you today if you'd like to come and pray. We'll let the rest of the congregation that's got plans for dinner dates and other things go their way. But we'll, my plan is to be with you if you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit today. God bless you. God bless you today. Let his presence fill you. Receive him in the night season or whenever. But he's here for you today. Believe and receive. Amen. God bless you. Pastor Ray. Amen. So glad to have everyone here today. We got some new stories today, didn't we? How about that? I thought I heard them all. Yeah. Psalms 19, verse 14. We read this, say this, every Sunday in, our, in the closing. And I always like to say something about it. You can use this verse at any point in your life. At any situation in your life, you can use this voice, this verse. And you can throw this verse up in a conversation or an argument. Or you're having nice words with your loved ones. Psalms 19, 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You be blessed and go be a blessing to someone this week. Next Sunday we will have service here. Wednesday night we have service. God bless you.